Back again. This time it's Burgundy. I'm Ron Burgundy? I'm Kyle Meyer. Next to me is Frederick Weber. Yes. Yes. Swiss? No, Alsace. Alsace. Ah. Yes. And uh, this guy knows how to make wine. He knows how to make really, really good wine from fantastic vineyards, which we're going to discuss today. And we're going to discuss his ability as a winemaker too, because in this particular vintage, it was challenged to say the least. Um, but to start, um, let's start a little bit with, uh, with Bouchard. Frederick, welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, if you could just give us um, uh, a quick summary of, of, of Bouchard. You know, what, what type of winery is it? Is it a domain? Is it a negoce? Is it both? It is a both. Yeah. And Bouchard is a maison in, uh, in Beaune. And uh, we, have the, we are very lucky. We have a, a great domain. It's a, certainly the, the greatest domain of Burgundy in Côte d'Or uh, with uh, 130 hectares. Uh, from uh, Gevray Chambertin to uh, Puligny Morachet. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have the chance to have uh, 12 hectares of Grand Cru, 74 hectares of Premier Cru, and mainly in Côte de Beaune and uh, Côte de Nuit. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's very huge and it's very passionate to, 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 to vinificate all, all different from, uh, vines come from uh, yes, Burgundy. So for you, it's like Christmas every day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, 74 hectares of Premier Cru Burgundy. It, 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 the number might or might not mean anything to you, but it is a huge number. It's uh, closing in on 200 acres yeah. of uh, Premier Cru Burgundy vineyards, which is incredible. When you look at the vineyards and you see the size of the plots, yeah, you know, one plot is the size of this table. But in fact, <laughs> the, do the domain is 450 different plots. It's, uh, it's amazing. And uh, you have to, uh, to, uh, to have a good connaissance of each plot to, to work very precisely for each uh, parcel and uh, to, uh, to understand the soil, uh, to understand the appellation and after to, uh, to have a good work during the vinification and to express the, the best of each parcel. That's very important, and uh, it's the domain. But also, we are negotiating, and uh, we bought a lot of grapes, and we vinificate it, and uh, and uh, it's a, uh, we have the same in at attention for the uh, for the negos than for the domain. Mm. For me, it's the same thing. When the grape arrive at the winery, uh, I do the, the same job, the same passion. So, 450 different parcels. Yeah. So, is that 450 different vinifications? Yes. Or <laughs> yes, almost, we, huh? Yeah, yeah. We we adapt because uh, we have um, uh, at the winery we have uh, one hundred forty different vats for the red wine and one hundred thirty eight for the white wine. And every day uh, I test every morning with my team um, all the vats. Yeah. And after the tasting, we decided uh, if we continue the, uh, the maceration, uh, what we have to do, we punch the cap, we rack him over, we rack the wine and we put in barrels. Uh, that's, yeah. You know, I, I don't think people understand this, Frederick, that, you know, when you talk about like a Bordeaux Chateau or something, sure, they separate the plots, etc. But they're essentially making two or three wines in the end. <laughs> Right. No. In fact, uh, us we we vinified you... more one hundred different appellation. But in Burgundy, in the same appellation, there is clima and yeah. uh, there is another separation. And for example, for the Bonne Vigne de l'Enfant Jésus, it's just four hectares. But uh, it's for me, it's uh, four different plots. And I vineyard because um, the age of the of uh, the vine is not the same. The typicity of the soil, the plot is not the same. The orientation and. Uh, uh, we vinificate separately because uh, we harvest separately each one and uh, we could uh, play with different styles of vinification. And after I blend it, after the aging, we blend it to make the cuvee Vigne de l'Enfant Jésus. You are the conductor of an amazing, huge orchestra. Yeah, yes. But, uh, now, it's nice. getting back to that, 450 plots, okay? You're the conductor of this orchestra and then you have a vintage like 2013, mm. how did you survive? <laughs> I'm alive. Because <laughs> really, it was one of the most difficult vintages to yes. grow grapes, maybe in the, in the last 30 years for sure. Yeah, exactly. In Burgundy, 13 was a very difficult uh, vintage, especially during the, um, 
the, the spring was very hard with us. Uh, the winter was uh, not so cold, uh, but very wet, very cloudy. And during uh, the flowering period, uh, there is a uh, very cold period, and uh, we lost a lot of our production with, uh, with the coulure. And uh, after there is a big hailstorm, uh, especially on the Côte de Beaune, we destroy a, a large part of uh, uh, Beaune, Savigny, Alos, Pomar, Volnay. And uh, yes, it's, it was very difficult. Uh, we, uh, the weather was very difficult with us, and we, we work a lot uh, in the vineyards. Um, but after July and August was nice, not very, very hot, but nice. And uh, in September, generally in Burgundy, we, uh, we say uh, September uh, makes the vintage, mm. and this year, September saves the vintage. Mm. And, uh, but we have a very good uh, maturity. Uh, for the red wine, we prefer to eliminate the leaves to have a very good exposure for the for the grapes. For the Chardonnay, we prefer to keep the leaves and to don't touch the, the vine because we, the, the skin was fragile and we would like to protect uh, the, the Chardonnay. Here's a crazy question for you. Mm -hmm. Can the bad weather help a vintage in the end? Are there things that weather can do to assist you? Yes. Uh, in fact, um, with uh, 2013, you, you remember that uh, with the Pinot Noir, he, he likes the bad weather. The Pinot Noir <laughs> likes uh, cold temperature during the night, he likes uh, uh, um, uh, during the day I have uh, a lot of sun, but not too much. And uh, when the maturity arrives uh, um, progressively, it's really nice for the Pinot Noir. And you will see with the 13, there's a perfect representation of uh, the uh, Pinot Noir could express really uh, the expression of each terroir very mm. precisely. Right. It's, very, it's, it's huge for us because you could understand very more the each land. Mm. Now what about, uh, and what about the hail? Because you were talking earlier about the hail, and though it's, and, and hail is horrible. Believe me folks, there's nothing worse for a vigneron, a winemaker, a grape grower than to see the rocks fall. Okay, it seems our initial estimate was a little off. They're more the size of basketballs. Pieces of ice the size of basketballs are falling from the sky, so that is pretty serious. Everyone should probably be taking refuge under concrete structures just as fast as humanly possible. It is absolutely devastating, but in 13, it may have aided you a little bit because there was less yeah. grapes, yeah. so the grapes that were on the vine Maybe. Yes, exactly. In fact, uh, the ale appeared when the, uh, the grape was green, mm -hmm. and uh, when the ale touched the, uh, the berries, they dry and fell. Yeah, yeah. Like it's not a, a problem for the quality, but just for the quantity. And um, uh, after, the grape was very aerate, and uh, it decreased the yield, and it permit to have a very good vintage. Yeah. It, it said, also, it uh, helped for us to, to, uh, to have a very good vintage. So it was like a green harvest, like a, a vendange vert. Uh, not but, this year, uh, no. Yeah, no, 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 the, the hail did it for you. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> what's, the, what's the character then of, of 2013 as a vintage for the red wines? What do you think? Like, how would you describe them? I think there is a, a very uh, a good color, but uh, for me the most important is uh, the quality of the aroma. It's a very inexpressive wine. Uh, the, for the Côte de Beaune, it's very showy, with a lot of fruit and a very uh, approachable vintage, uh, with a lot of pleasure. So it's a round tannin, very silky tannin. It's very, it's really nice with a lot of pleasure. Yeah. The, they're they're really vintage. tender. Yes, really they're really tender, tender exactly. but but they're not um, they're not lean. They're not fat. They're just very hmm. Like yes. very nice. Yes, exactly. But uh, during the harvest, we were afraid. But uh, after the first day uh, in the, during the um, uh, vinification, we, we were more confident. And after the, the aging in barrels in July, it's really a revelation for us, uh, the 13. And today uh, in Burgundy, we are very, very confident uh, for this vintage. Because uh, when we taste on the barrels, it's uh, more and more, we have a lot of pleasure. And uh, yeah, today it's nice. Mm. For aging, would you put it somewhere in the middle? Like not maybe I like a Van de Garde, like 05 or something, but maybe? No, no, for me, uh, 13 is really a uh, drinkable vintage uh, with a lot of pleasure. Mm. It's perhaps it's better to drink it uh, for two to five years. Mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. uh, Certainly, uh, before the 12, 12, there is more yeah. concentration yeah. to more acidity, and you could you could uh, keep more long time. Mm. You know, I think I think the key is, is is drinkability is not associated with with bad or lesser. I think drinkability is associated with deliciousness. Yeah. You know, because 
you know, a bad vintage may be a vintage that's maybe too tannic or too vegetal or too or out of balance. Yeah, yeah. These wines are very harmonious. Yes, you, you would like to drink more. Yeah, yeah. I, I think harmony, har harmony and symmetry is, is the great is a sign of a really excellent vintage. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, don't put them in your cellar for 20 years, but for the next half dozen years, you know, I can't think of a vintage that was tastier early on than the 2013s, many of these wines. But at the same time, they show a serious, transparent side and, and, a, real, and a real testament to their individual terroirs. There's great, you know, what the Allen Meadows, you know, these guys use the term transparency mm. in the wine. I think there's good transparencies in these wines. They really taste delicious. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Frederick, man, I don't envy you making 450 different wines in one of the, when Mother Nature just says, buddy, no way. I know, it's a wonderful. It's and amazing. you do this? Oh, yeah. You a rock star. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. This is, wow, nice. <laughs>